that's love. Amen. But for us, and the reason we're celebrating today, yeah. that's not how the story ends. Amen. Three days later, yeah. he rose yeah. again. That's love. Come on and give God a hand. Amen. Amen. Praise him. God is an awesome God and he's always worthy to be praised. Amen. Father, we come today to say thank you and Lord, you're an awesome God, and you're always worthy of praise, and we lift you high. We just give you the glory and honor. We thank you for today because for many things that we are preoccupied and our minds are occupied with, we, Lord, thank you that in the midst of the trials, troubles, and uh, pains, and problems, we still have hope because you are our hope. Amen. And Father, the fact that we serve a God that is able to overcome death and the grave lets us know that you're able to overcome anything that's troubling us in our lives and can help us. And so because of that alone, we are not people without hope, but we are people of hope. And we thank you for that. Now we ask that you would bless our time together. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Always, God, uh, I pray that you would lead me in my message this morning and let me say what you want your people to hear and help me to say them in the way that you want me to say them. Uh, for it's in Jesus' name I do ask it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Do we have any more youth that, and these go to the, to the fellowship hall, we see some people that came in later. Uh, if we have some youth that need to go to the fellowship hall, you can do that at this time. <clears throat> Amen. Also, I, I meant to announce and to give um, uh, thanks to Damascus and uh, especially to the ladies, to Sister Betty in particular, in leading and taking care of the food for the fellowship on last Sunday of the men's annual day and for the awesome day that we were able to give to our men and show to them. And it's just good to have uh, deacons that uh, are serving God and serving the church. So we're excited and thankful to God for all that he allows to happen in our midst. And that is one of them. So we do want to thank you for that, Damascus. Just for a few minutes, because I know we're, we're here. And, you know, unfortunately, and uh, some of us have, uh, have had a long day already. Amen. But, uh, amen. It was cold out there this morning. It was windy. And it yeah so I just y'all pray for me that I'm able to get through this message yes, Amen. we're going to talk about the love and the mercy of Christ that last song kind, uh, kind of summed it all up because it is the love that he has for us ushers you may be seated it is the love that he has for us. And I want to point out this one verse found in Luke chapter 23, and the verse is 34. And this is what it says. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They do not know what they are doing. But Jesus was saying, 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You know, it's something when you think about it. And all of us have read through that chapter, and we've covered these verses time and time again. And we know this is Jesus now. He's on the cross, right? He's already hanging up there. They've already uh, walked him through those mock trials that they had done the night before. They'd already beaten him with the 39 stripes. They'd already torn him and crushed him and battered him and, and bruised him. And, and here he is now. They've already nailed the nails in his hands and the spikes in his feet. They've already stripped, stripped him of his outer garment and he's hanging up there uh, in shame and humiliation before the masses and there he is hanging up on the cross you know he's already in a tremendous pain he's already in tremendous pain and yet still he's hanging there he's stretched out he's he, he's 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 feeling the the, the whole uh, of the pain and the suffering that he's going through and it says right then but Jesus was saying forgive them Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As a matter of fact, if you read up, it says that two others were with him. Two criminals were there with him being put to death, this being the place of the skull. And there was two criminals. He that is no criminal was between two criminals. Yeah. Yeah. One on the right and one on the left. When you read down, you'll find that these two criminals was just being as bad and scornful as the rest of the people. But in the midst of all of that, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Amen. Now, while he's saying that, Brother Michael, he's up there praying and interceding for the masses, and they are casting lots for his garments. While he's up there interceding for people, they're going about doing their own thing. The Bible says, as you read through, that many are, are mocking him. Many are insulting him. They're hurling insults at him. I mean, he, and I'm sure some of those that's hurling the insults are those that have been persuaded. More than likely, those that have been touched by his hand but persuaded by the influence of the enemy to turn their backs on him. Amen. It's interesting and amazing how easy it is for us to be persuaded. You know, you got to be careful when you're dealing with people because people are funny and people are fickle like that because they can be patting you on the back at one time and at the next moment they're stabbing you in the back. You got to be careful. Some people that hold you up, they listen to other people that dislike you or hate you for no reason and even for a reason. But they begin to listen to them and they begin to look at you differently. So I'm sure some of them that are hurling insults and looking and laughing and mocking and scorning him are the very ones that ate of his table when he fed the 5,000 men, not counting women and children. I'm sure it was some of them in that number. And you know who else knew it? He did too. But in the midst of that, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. I'm talking about the love and the mercy of Christ. You know, people, and y'all know, Christ is the center of my message every week. Because he is the center of our existence. Now, the thing is, uh, many of, of us have uh, been made to believe that we are the center. But no, he is the center. And I make no apologies for focusing on Christ. You know. In the midst of all of that, Father, can you imagine? I want you to get it. Can you imagine? Because see, he knows who's who. 
He knows not only what they say, but he knows how they feel. He knows not only what they say, but he knows what they think. He knows those that love him, those that are committed to him, those that are loyal to him, and he knows the ones that despise him. He knows the ones that's not going to accept his gift and recognize who he is, but in the midst of that, he says to his father, forgive them. But they do not know what they are doing. Look at that crowd. That's a crowd there at that cross. Look at the crowd at the cross. You know who's not uh, very visible at that cross? You know mostly everybody's there but his <laughs> but his disciples. As a matter of fact, there's only one that's mentioned in the midst. John. But look at the others at the cross. The crowd that's gathered. Hurling abuse and insult, sneering, mocking Christ. Look at the dishonor, disdain that they're giving to the one that is deity. Look at how they're disrespecting him. Do y'all agree that that's very disrespectful, what they're doing? Very, very disrespectful. If you are who you say you are, come off this cross. You, after all, you're the king of the Jews. Look at you. Where is your subjects? Where is your crown? Where is your, your kingdom? One of the thieves. Why don't you save yourself and us? Yeah. Who's going to get his garments? Let's see who's going to get his garments. So let's roll dice to see who's going to get his garments. Let's just gamble at the cross. They're gambling at the cross. Oh, yeah. But you know, I got to say this. Sometimes we're gambling at the cross. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're gambling with the cross. Look at how they're treating him, mothers. After all, he's just not anybody, even though he's, he's between those two thieves, those two criminals, he's not a criminal at all. He is God. Amen. This is God the Son. Y'all yeah. yeah, like the way I said that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I say that because... You know, some, some religions trick you into thinking they are right because they say he is the son of God. But if that's all he is, then he is not who he is. He is not just the son of God. He is God the son. He is accused, listen, he's accused of blasphemy by the blasphemers themselves. <laughs> Accused of doing something that they are doing. The blasphemers accuse the one being blasphemed of blasphemy. He's not just anybody hanging there. He is innocent, Deacon Whitfield. He's the only one that's innocent. Do y'all agree that he's innocent? It is written. Even uh, he was he was brought before the courts, but they could find no, no fault in him. There was no fault found in him. If there's no fault found in you, then that means you're innocent. But look at him, the innocent. The one that is innocent is being executed by the ones that are guilty. Yeah. yeah. That's good, Pastor. I like that. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah. The one that is life. He is the one who is life that is dying. So those that are dead may live. He is not just anybody. He is God, the Son. And we see in him the love, the mercy, the grace, the compassion of the Father. You know, the Jews wanted him dead so they can continue on with their celebration and their Passover festivities. Oh, yeah. They, they want, let's get him out of the way so we can continue to worship God. Let's kill God so we can continue to worship God. See, they want to get on with the slaying of the lambs, you know. I mean, that's what they look forward to. After all, this is what we do because of what God did through Moses, right? When he delivered us from Egypt. You know the story, don't you? When they took that lamb of the first year that was without spot or blemish, and they killed him and placed the blood of that lamb on the doorpost, the lentils of their homes, and when the death angel passed by, that those in their house was uh, uh, spared death, but if you were not covered in the blood, you died. I got to tell you now, we got to go for a moment and do a praise break. Thank God for the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Jews from that time on, Dick and Anchor, you know, that was what they celebrated yearly. To remember the deliverance from Pharaoh down in Egypt. But I got to tell you something. It was more than deliverance from Pharaoh. When you think about what that uh, is symbolic of, what that represents, what that is a type of, it's more than deliverance from Pharaoh. Actually, listen, you ain't going to like this, but it's deliverance from the wrath of God. Amen. Say amen, my Revelation Bible study students. That's right. They rejected. They rejected. Yeah. They wanted to slay the lamb that could never take away sin, but they rejected the one true lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. Oh, yes. I mean, Dick and Necker, couldn't you say they had the wrong focus? <laughs> Look at the one next to you and say, make sure you're focused. And you're focused in the right direction. Man, God. Can you imagine now, now, look at the crowd and all that they're doing and then look at Listen to what they're saying. And I want you to read that. Just listen. Kind of, you know, listen to what they're saying. You know how we like to hear what's being said when we're not in a conversation. Listen to what's being said. And, 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 and you'll see how they are dealing and how they are talking about Jesus and God and how they are doing him. God's, uh, 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 his son, uh, the son, uh, God the son that's on the cross. And the father is listening to that. And can you imagine now, now, how would you feel if you were able to hear what they are saying about your children? How would you feel if they were doing this to your children? Just say it was your only child that they were doing this to. Yeah. God heard everything they said. He saw everything that they did. Oh, yeah. Would you say that that would have been very offensive to God? Amen. 
Would it have been offensive to you? And if you could, would you want to do something about it? No, that's all right. I don't want to do nothing. They, they fine. Yeah, of course that's how it is. Mm -hmm. How would you expect the holy, righteous God to react to this kind of blasphemy? How do you think or expect the righteous, holy one to act? You would expect him to pour out his wrath and his vengeance and his justice on those who are perpetrating such a thing upon him, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Sure you would. Yeah. You know, that's what the sons of thunder wanted, the fire from heaven to come down and uh, burn up the enemies. Go ahead. Let's get them. God, I know you're offended by this. You're offended by the sins of the masses. Because it contradicts your holiness. It makes mockery of your righteousness. It makes mockery of who you are. I know you're offended by this. All of these that have uh, uh, prostituted your grace and mercy. Those who have abused your love and grace. I know you're offended by this. I know, God, that you're tired of that. And your justice is going to come upon them. And it does. God administers justice, wrath, judgment, but not upon them, but upon his son for them. Let that soak for a minute. He did vindicate his holiness and righteousness. He did. But not on those that were guilty, but on his innocent son. It came swiftly, Reverend Jewel, but it didn't come upon the people, it came upon his son. Talking about God's love and mercy and grace that's given to us. What should have been theirs, what should have been ours, was laid upon his son. How tolerant is holiness? How patient is righteousness? How enduring is mercy and grace? But God did take care of it. He honored his word. But you didn't have to pay it. I didn't have to pay it. His son paid it. Do you understand what that means? That means because of what God did, to Jesus, allow to happen to Jesus was what should have happened to you and what should have happened to me. But Jesus took it. The wages of sin that I owed was death. The wages of sin that you owed, death. All of us owed death. All of us was under the judgment of God. All of us was under the coming wrath of God. All of us was guilty as charged before God. All of us deserve to die and go to hell before God. All of us are stands without an excuse. We do not have an alibi nor a get by. We are guilty as charged. All of us should have been on that cross. We should have been standing there. No, all of us are guilty. God's wrath that came upon his son should have come upon us. But God's love and his mercy. Leviticus 24 and 16, anyone who blasphemes my name shall die. That's what God said. It is a capital crime to blaspheme the name of God. And all of those at that cross that day blaspheme the name of God. But God did what his word said. They did die, but not in themselves. They died in Christ. Justice did fall. It fell on Christ. Judgment did crush. It crushed Christ. He did judge. Did he have the right to judge them? Certainly he did. Did he have the right to destroy them on the spot? Cow them forever in the hell? Of course he did. 
But he didn't. Instead of doing it to them, he did it to his son. The uniqueness of God is this. Even when he is greatly offended, listen to me, brothers and sisters. Even when he is greatly offended, he offers forgiveness. That's what Jesus said. He offers forgiveness. Even when he is greatly offended, he still offers mercy. Even when we rail at him, turn from him, abuse his name, he still offers grace. Amen. Even when I minimize who he is and, the, and don't acknowledge him as God the Son, he still offers compassion. You know who's hanging on that cross? It is God who is hanging on that cross. Amen. That God is hanging on that cross. God, God whose patience is far beyond ours. And y'all know we are some impatient people. Oh, yeah. Who think they have great patience? I think I do too, but I'm always, I'm continually informed that I am very impatient. Yeah. His ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. We see two groups there. We see God who is loving, kind, and merciful, and compassionate, and then we see the people who are not. Amen. Do you realize that even the two criminals that was hanging with him, both of them were railing at him like the others, but something happened to one of them that changed his mind. And just when he changed his mind, God accepted him. He said, this day. See, I don't know where you are. Maybe you came in with the wrong vision, view, and value of Christ. But maybe as I've been talking to you, you've changed your mind. I want to tell you, God will change your heart right now. Jesus loves us. You know, the children say, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yeah. And we see it. We see it even in this one verse where it says, where Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. We see the love of God. We see the mercy of God. We see the grace of God. We see the hideousness of sin in the people that are gathered. But we see the manifold mercy and grace of God that is showered upon all of humanity. And I want to tell you, no matter how hideous your life has been, God's grace and mercy is there to be poured out for you. And all you have to do is bow at the footstool of mercy and receive what God has for you. And God will grant you that. God will will pour out his love and his mercy, his grace. God will lift you up. God will hold you up. God will bear you up. God will straighten you up. God will clean you up. God will receive you unto himself if you just say, yes, Lord. I'm just about through. But I'm just so amazed by God because, you know, up to the point of the cross, Jesus had really gone through a whole lot. Can you imagine having to sit down at the table, break the bread with the very one that have already sold you out? And extend love, mercy, and grace to him, knowing he already has sold you out? 
He's already signed the contract. Can you imagine what he went through when he was telling them what he was going to go through and Peter said, not so. The student correcting the teacher. And the thing about it, he is not a student teacher. He is the master teacher. It ain't like somebody correcting me because I'm going to mess up. You can correct me. Help me if you can. Don't let me keep going wrong. But you can't correct Jesus. Can you imagine how he felt not only that Peter rebuked him, but that Peter was going to deny him, the very one you love and the very one that's been a stalwart of the faith and one that has stood in boldness and one of the front runners would deny you three times. Can you imagine what he went through knowing the judgment that was upon him when they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall? Knowing that there was no fault in him. It's one thing to be charged guilty when you're guilty. But it's a whole nother something when you're guilt, charged guilty. When you know you are innocent and they know you are innocent. He went through a lot before he got to the cross. Well, they could look at the beating that he took. It's one thing to be beat for your own guilt, but he was beat for the guilt of others. But he did it. He went through a lot before he says, Father, forgive them. I mean, he tried to carry the cross, but he was just so weak, he fell on the weight of it. Yeah. I mean, he was just about done before he got hung up on that cross. With all he had been through, open wounds, serrations on his back, all of that, broken blood oozing out and flesh peeled away. And then they lay him on that wooden cross nail him and hang him up and drive it down into the ground. Can you imagine how it felt when that the nails, they jarred him in the ground and it pulled through his tendons and it touched his nerves and how that went through his body? The pain? Yeah. Can you imagine how he felt as he was undressed before the masses and in humiliation there he stood on the cross, the Son of God, or God the Son on the cross, exposed to humanity? It was more than suffering, it was to shame you. It was more than physical, it was emotional, mental. I'm talking about Jesus and what he did. And all of this before he uttered this, one of his seven last words, Father, forgive them. Yeah. And you know, Dick and Aker, that wasn't the end of it. Because even in the midst of his pain, can you imagine? The pain, the pain. Now you know he got so bad that Jesus could not even breathe. Oh yeah. But before that, it tells us that he spoke to one of the thieves and he told him today you will be with me in paradise he stopped dying to give life to one that was gonna die in the midst 
of his pain, he didn't forget his mother. And John, John, we mentioned John earlier. John was standing there. And I was in a service Friday, and one of the uh, speakers said, you know, Jesus had other brothers, but he committed his mother to John. Look at what he went through. Being forsaken, Reverend Joel, he was crushed by the Father. The very sins of the world, that cup that he had to drink from was the sins of humanity. All of, just think of the worst thing you've done. That ain't nothing. I guarantee you there's somebody that's done a hundred, something a hundred times worse than that. Now don't get happy now. That don't make you good. And that don't make you all right. I'm just saying. I know how we do. Well, I ain't done what he did, though. I guess I'm okay. No, you're not. Sin is sin. And all sin is he is to God. Every bit of it. So don't think your little pet sin spares you. Well, at least I ain't done A, B, C, or D. Okay. Just do whatever you do and think that's gonna, you're going to get by. That ain't why you get by. You get by because Jesus done already paid for that. God had to deal with it, and this is how he dealt with it. He said, I can't look at that sin. I, got, I can't do nothing for you right now, Jesus. Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? It's not written, but it's because of sin. The first time in existence, Jesus felt disconnected from his father. First time ever that there was a disconnect. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabathani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus experienced thirst because of the decomposing, dehydration, all this going forth in his body. The relinquishing of expelling of all the fluids here he is and he says I thirst yeah. I'm about through but, but that wasn't the end I, I like the song said but that's not how the story ends that's not how it ends even here because even in the midst of that Jesus says it is finished these are the words of Christ listen these words of Christ that says it is finished that means the sin debt has been paid in full you ever had a debt that you owed and you paid the last payment and they stamped it paid in full didn't you feel good about that you ever purchased something and you was waiting on that last payment you make that last payment you wait on the on it to come in the mail and it's paid in full. Don't that can you and, and so you ain't gotta worry about that anymore. They can't come back and charge you with that anymore. They can't come back and get that from you. Why? Because it's paid in full. They can't bother you. They, they can't hinder you. They, they, they can't pester you with payments. Why? Because it's paid in full. Sin debt has been paid in full. The enemy cannot to you with that anymore. God will not charge you with that anymore. You no longer owe, uh, owe for that anymore because you have the bill of rent that says paid in full. When Jesus said it is finished, Jesus was saying, affirming with the Father and saying to us that it is finished. You no longer have to worry about falling under the power 
of the enemy and you no longer you no longer have to worry about facing the wrath of God you no longer have to worry about the sin debt because God's word has not changed when the Bible says in the beginning God and even up to where we are now God's word has not changed. When he said the wages of sin is death, his word has not changed. But when he said the gift of God we see it now is eternal life, that's what Jesus gives when he said it is finished. Have I got a witness? If you don't mind, tell the one next to you that I don't have to worry about the penalty of sin. I don't have to worry about the wrath of God because my sin debt has already been paid. You need to say it like this. Jesus paid it all and all to him I own. Ain't God all right? When he said it is finished, the Satan no longer have, yes, the right to you, nor the right to me. I no longer have to worry and live under the hand of God's judgment and God's wrath because it's already been given to Jesus. I no longer stand before him lost and in sin. When God looks at me, he no longer looks at my failures and faults, my hurts and hang-ups, but he sees his own son. In other words, when he looks at me, he sees me through Jesus and therefore I am redeemed I am justified by faith how is that because I believe that God loved the world I believe that the wages of sin was death but God gives was eternal life I believe that I'm guilty as charged and I stand before God guilty or as charged but I also believe that Jesus stood as my substitute and when he went before the judge he didn't say I'll just pay what he owe and you let him go but when he said I'll pay with my life because that's what he owe and he gave his life so I could live in his life ain't he alright I am here today because he loves me and he looked beyond my fault and he met my need he saw me as a sinner in need of a savior and he saved me by his sacrifice I am a child of God because Jesus said it is finished. Jesus didn't give it up until he finished the work. Aren't you glad about it? He said it is finished. Reverend Jewel, because it's finished, he said, Father, into thy hand. I commend my spirit into thy hand. I commend my spirit. I stop by to tell you nobody killed him. Nobody took his life. But he laid his life down. He gave up the ghost, as they say. And he dropped his head in his shoulders. He died. I said he died. He died. My Savior died. Do you believe he died? He died for sinner man, woman, boy, and girl. He died for the hell raiser and the homemonger. He died for the murderer and the molester. He died for the liar, backbiter, backstabber, and the thief. He died 
for the hypocrite. Yes, he died for you and for me. He died for the dope dealer and the drug addict. He died, said he died. He died for the proud and the arrogant. He died, yes, he died. He died for the self-righteous and the judgment. He died, I said he died. He died, he died. They took his body from that tree. Yes, they did. They took his body, uh, Joseph uh, of Arimathea, they took his body uh, and laid it in a borrowed tomb. Uh, yes, uh, it was borrowed, Deke, uh, because he didn't need a permanent place. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he didn't have to buy it. Uh, he just needed to borrow it uh, for a little while because early... I said early, 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 that Thursday morning, uh, he got up, uh, he got up, uh, he got up, uh, the Christ we serve, uh, he is the risen Lord, uh, he got up uh, with all power uh, in his hand. Uh, I say it like I say it. Uh, the rock uh, that was in the rock, uh, laying on the rock. Uh, yes, uh, the stone, uh, the rock in front of the rock uh, was rolled away from the rock. Uh, and the rock in the rock uh, that was laying on the rock uh, stepped out of the rock, uh, stood up on the rock uh, and said, I power. All power, all power, all power, power to heal, power to forgive, power to lift up, power to hold up, power to lead, power to guide, all power, all power, all power in his hand, ain't he all right? And he shows his love, his mercy, his compassion, even on the cross. The first saying, the first saying was, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. And sometimes we do wrong and we know it. But maybe we don't know the depth of that that we're doing. Maybe we don't understand, but one thing about it, he does. And the thing about God, he is a forgiving father. He is a forgiving father. 
So I just want to challenge you to accept the love of God, the forgiveness of God, and the mercy of God. Sometimes what happens to us, we'll feel bad about it and we walk away. We walk from him instead of walking to him. But I want to challenge you wherever you are, walk to him. He's ready for you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to restore you. He wants to walk with you. He's, his desire is for you to be a child of his. The Bible said it's not God's will that any should perish. God don't want you to be lost. He wants you to accept his son. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's the only way to be right with God. Not by works of righteousness that you have done. You haven't done enough. You can never do enough. But Jesus paid the price. He's the one that walked in perfect harmony with God. No sin. God was found in him. There was no fault found in him. But he took the sins of humanity upon himself and died in our place so that we could live in God's life and grace. The door is open. The invitation is extended. However God is moving, if he's moving at all, I want you to have that conversation with him. You know, we're big about bringing people down to the front. But I want you to bow where you are and I want you to think about what you need to think about. Take a moment and let this message speak to you. Ask God what would he have you to do. When he shows you what he would have you to do, then I encourage you to do that. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Speak to our hearts, O oh God, is our prayer. Lead us in the way that we should go. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and the forgiveness that's offered to us. We ask you to speak to us. Give us hearts to hear, mind to understand, and the will to do. And we thank you for your grace and mercy. If you're here and you desire to be a part of Damascus, we extend you an invitation to come. Now this you have to do. You have to come. Having already given God your heart, give us your hand.